The interesting thing about EVE Online is that no matter what career path you take, you can play in that path for years and still find all kinds of challenges. And there are a lot of career choices, and most people, when they start, have no idea which way to go. Let's break down EVE's career paths, and by so doing, we can gain a greater understanding of what the game actually has to offer. It has been said that one can be an asteroid miner or industrialist for years and be a complete noob when it comes to something else like PvP. Those who have done a little bit of research in EVE may have seen this massive career path chart. It really gives you an idea about the scale of the game. You'll notice these little markers here. The colored markers on the left indicate the difficulty of the activity, and the blue markers on the right indicate the expense or investment required for the activity, meaning how much assets, isk, or credits you might need to do that activity. Now, I somewhat agree with this chart. There are some things that I will skip over and maybe slightly disagree with, and this chart is a little bit old. There are probably several career paths that have come to life after various updates to the game. EVE career paths are broken down into PvE or PvP and then further broken down from there. One should keep in mind that really all EVE careers can be PvP even if you're not actively shooting someone else, as there is often competition over the player-driven markets, supply, demand, resources, etc. But let's start with PvE. The most basic and benign form of PvE is called industry, and this includes resource extraction, hauling, and production. Mining is the most basic form of resource extraction, and the foundation from which all industry is built. It's not that difficult, and first it takes very little expense to get set up. Of course, the gods of mining will set up massive mining operations with mining command ships such as orcas and EVE moon mining stations and refineries that can crack open moons and get the nice delicious moon goo ore from there. There is also gas mining, a little bit higher risk as gas clouds are found outside of high security space. The various gases are used mostly for booster production or drugs that enhance your character's attributes or boost the abilities of your ship. The mining career path is relatively low risk but less patient players or those who need excitement will find this career path to be a real bore in short order. Also, miners are an easy target for pirates, skankers, or roaming fleets. The other extraction profession is planetary interaction, where a series of structures are remotely set up on various planets to farm resources from them or build commodities. Of course, you'd need a way of picking up those commodities, and that's where we move on to hauling as the next industrial profession. Here, you're basically a space trucker. You're using a hauling ship, up to the size of an actual freighter, which is absolutely massive, to transport all kinds of things to anywhere it needs to go in New Eden. There are entire third-party websites committed to this, committed to running courier contracts. This profession is not that difficult unless you're transporting something of high value or through dangerous space. In those instances, skilled pilots will use jump freighters, which do not rely on stargates to get things moved, and that avoids things like gate camps or gankers. Hauler and freighter ganking in high sec is also a danger to this profession, especially if you're carrying something expensive. These gankers scan transport ships and freighters on a regular basis. If they think it's worth losing their ganking ship to the police just to take your haul, they will. Now this is where it gets complicated because the next category of industry is production. There are hundreds of different materials and components that go into building useful items in EVE and depending on the tier or quality of what you're building, it can involve a very complex supply and logistics line to accomplish it. Tech 2, 3, capital ship, and structure construction all require a very secure, efficient, and affordable supply line. Station facilities to build the items, money to invest, and players with the necessary skill levels to do the production. Some understanding of the market is also necessary to move the items you are building. Now let's talk about the market, and how you can make just the EVE Online player market your profession. The market in EVE Online is mostly player driven, meaning almost everything you buy and use in EVE is brought to you by a player who found it or built it, and is now selling it. There are people who make their entire career about strategic sales on the player driven market. It can take a lot of time to research where the market is going, 
and it can also be very competitive. So competitive that shooting wars can break out over this. There are many tricks and sort of scammy ways that people use in market trading. The more active forms of PvE are wormholes, exploration, ratting, incursions, and missions. Most of these forms of PvE require active combat except sometimes exploration. Exploration consists of using scanner probes to find various sites. Some of them are archaeological or data caches, and you can hack or use archaeological analyzers on these sites to gain the loot. And this is accomplished with mostly exploration frigates, such as the popular Estero. The other sites that can be found in this manner will require combat, where you must fight your way through a number of NPC pirates to get at the loot or the treasure. Wormholes are an entirely different world. You see, a wormhole in EVE is exactly what you'd think it is, a hole in space that can lead to other parts of space, even systems that are not connected via stargates at all. Those systems are called wormhole systems, and the NPCs there can give you items that are essential to higher tier production, and this can be extremely profitable, but to actually live in a wormhole or colonize it with your base requires some expense and setup. Ratting is a form of PvE that yields most profit in Nullsec. The word comes from pirate or pi-ratting, I think, which means that using a combat ship, you locate and run certain pirate sites that are protected by NPCs. You gain money from the loot that drops from these pirates and the bounties that accrue. Ratting in high sec is very low risk and low reward, but in null sec, ratting ships are often as heavy as a carrier, and in null sec, if there is a decent response fleet from your alliance, you can often be quite safe from the odd pirate that happens by, the odd player pirate that is. Incursions are a form of PvE on extreme hard mode. An incursion occurs when the Sansha pirate nation sort of invades a system and disrupts the general routine there. A variety of extremely difficult incursion sites will form in the system. These can earn one a great deal of cash if a large enough fleet of battleships form up to run the incursion. Incursion fleets require certain battleships or even doctrines to run effectively, so there is certainly a degree of upfront cost to start in on incursions. Once the routine is established, running incursions is a nice steady stream of a lot of money, although it can become monotonous. And then we come to missions. Missioning is perhaps the second most popular career behind mining in high security space. It is straightforward. You talk to a mission agent, they give you the conditions to fulfill the mission, fly to the mission location, and then complete the mission for your reward. The NPC corporations that give out these missions recognize your success by awarding loyalty points and cash, and those loyalty points allow you to get special ships or items that only those NPC corps have. Mission levels range from 1 to 4 in high security space and up to level 5 for low security systems. Missioning is an easily accessible and routine way of making ISK. Some people may eventually find it boring. Such people could actually become mission griefers. And this is where we started to get into the PvP oriented careers. The easiest form of mission PvP is ninja looting or simply coming in behind someone else's mission and taking the loot from their wrecks. This, of course, is legally a minor infraction, which means the ninja looter will be flag suspect and it is legal to shoot them. Ninja looters will either run away with the loot or they may be more than a mere ninja looter, but a suspect baiter, meaning they hope you will shoot them as this gives them the legal permission to shoot back. I have to admit I have engaged in this activity when I was dipping my toes into PvP and most mission ships are simply not equipped to deal with a dedicated PvP ship even if the PvP ship may be a size class smaller. However, it is not always easy to get missioners to fall for this trick. The other type of mission PvP is simply ganking the mission ship, meaning of course gankers will have their ships destroyed by the Concord police, however if the missioner's ship is so blinged out with fancy modules uh, as to run the missions in lightning style, then it may be well worth it to destroy that ship for the chance of one of these expensive modules to drop with the wreck. And this can be very profitable. Now, these are one of many PvP careers that can be done in high sec, but the most basic high sec PvP career is suicide ganking or destroying other players' ships 
while also getting killed by the police. So is that an actual profession or just griefing people or being a jerk? Well, it can be either since many ships that are targets for ganking happen to be carrying valuable cargo and then it becomes a career. Now in the career chart here, there are some I would not totally consider a career path and ninja looting we've already covered. Minor ransoming is essentially being a ganker but selling the miners pass to give them permission to mine and this is a profession as many miners will be silly enough to buy a mining pass whether these passes are honored or not is very hit and miss. And then there is all manner of war declarations or war decks in high sec. Declarations of war in high sec could occur for many reasons. Perhaps it's to eliminate someone else's stations and also manufacturing competition. It may be to ransom those mentioned stations. Some alliances do nothing but war deck almost everyone and then camp busy trade hub systems and or high traffic stargates. Mercenaries are definitely a legitimate career. Mercs are professionals who can be hired out to defend your stations or attack someone else's. Obviously, mercs are most effective and professional as part of a corp or alliance. Merc fleets are often the best equipped with an effective doctrine. The investment can be high depending on the professionalism of the particular merc outfit you're with. You'll notice here on the chart there is something called Poco Monopoly. This is not an activity that is restricted to high sec though, but it basically means gaining control over all the customs offices, which are the sort of orbital supply caches that hold all the planetary materials coming from the planet. And the owners of those stations will tax the value of the items that are coming through that customs office. To build this monopoly may require you to destroy the customs offices that belong to other players and defend the ones you have, so entire wars and campaigns are fought over these Poco empires. Other forms of high sec PvP careers may include suspect baiting on stations or getting people to shoot you where you have the advantage of the nearby station and all the assets you may have in there. Duel spamming is constantly challenging people to duels in high sec or anywhere really to fight without legal consequence. There are players in EVE who do nothing but this and have learned to gain the advantage in these duels most of the time. Piracy as a profession in EVE is not always the traditional definition of piracy which is to rob other ships or take them for yourself. Piracy in EVE mostly consists of many PvP activities that occur outside the safety of high security space. This may include gate camping either in low sec or null sec which can pay off if someone with quite a haul comes through the gate. Now, roaming is one of those things that may not pay off at all, but basically it's a hunt for good PvP fights. Roaming may be done solo, and this can be very difficult, or with a fleet of any size. Roaming as a group or a gang, unaffiliated with any particular faction or without enlisting in faction warfare, is often considered piracy, if this is done in Losec especially, where there is still a legal flag for aggressively attacking people which means your personal security status may drop to criminal level, which is really kind of just a bright red label that makes you a criminal pirate in the eyes of the game mechanics. There are ways you can legally roam in PvP, however, and gain loyalty points from the NPC empires, and that's called faction warfare, where small proxy wars are fought over certain low-sec systems between the major NPC empires. This allows you to legally fight the opposing faction, while also obtaining the loyalty points from the various tiers of faction warfare sites. It may not be as hardcore as roaming with an unaffiliated group pirate style, but it can be profitable and a way to get into PvP without investing a lot of expenses into it. Then we come to those forms of PvP careers that generally require a group or a corp to accomplish. Hot dropping is a form of PvP which involves surprising your enemy with powerful ships that can use jump drives, to appear at your location with shock and awe. To accomplish the jump or drop requires the ship to light a sinusoro field, which is a kind of flare in space, at the target location so that the jump drives will have something to lock onto. The ships capable of this are usually Black Ops battleships or Kovop ships, if the Sino is a covert Sino, but occasionally a Sino for capital ships can work, like for dreadnoughts and carriers, but that's generally overkill. Structure removal 
we've already kind of covered. Basically, you could make an entire career with specialized fleets that destroy stations, customs offices, and other space structures with your alliance. Wormhole eviction involves removing the inhabitants of a wormhole system, either to claim it for your alliance or simply take as much as you can from the poor wormholers who inhabit it. This involves a lot of structure bashing, but much more as far as wormhole control through warp disruption bubbles and a lot of incidental PvP in the process. This item on this chart is interesting, HVT hunting. I read this as knowing there is a player out there who is either hauling valuable cargo, using a blinged out ship to do PvE, or even another PvPer who is also blinged out to a degree that makes them deadly. This is a very high form of hunting and it requires time and investment. Now there are careers in EVE that have everything to do with fulfilling a role in an alliance and a corporation. For example, as the CEO, alliance diplomat, fleet commander, or even IT specialist, you may be spending nearly all of your game time in these roles. This means that you're dedicated to your particular alliance or corp, and the game then truly becomes more about the people you play with as much as the gameplay. And so, now we come to scamming. Scamming a sucker is allowed in this game, but it also is a bit misunderstood. Eve's reputation for having scams often makes new to somewhat new players overly paranoid about everything someone else is doing. What people fail to understand is that people in this game do want friends they can trust. But you must earn that trust. And if something looks too good to be true, then it's likely to be a scam. Basic scams will offer a service or item that may appear to be of value, or even rare, but it's worthless. It may involve certain tricks on the market to take advantage of traders who misclick and pay more than they should. It may be a long and an elaborate way of gaining a sucker's trust and then stealing that sucker's things. Scammers themselves may be entirely honorable in real life, but taking advantage of people in the game is a thrill for them, but they often feel quite guilty or bad about it. Those who are immune to scammers never put anything on the line or have anything of value that can be stolen. Okay, and finally we come to community-based careers. These are careers that are all about supporting the game through groups, events, education, and even out-of-game things like podcasts, YouTube videos like this one, and other things. Even though we are out of the game, in a way, we are still playing the game. You see, EVE is one of those games where sometimes you're still playing, even when you're not logged into the game. Because a lot of times you're constantly making some sort of communication about the game to fellow players and fellow community builders. So we're coming to conclusions. Now most of the time new players feel quite rudderless when they first start the game. The ones that stay in the game are either ambitious, very social, or curious about what lies further down the path. And it is also important to be aware that if you're on one particular career path, EVE is an ecosystem where there are many, many other things going on. And to keep it interesting, you can and often will branch out into other career paths. Now, Space Friends, this is by no means a comprehensive guide about the details and variations of all EVE career paths. There are other videos out there much longer than this one if you want to dive into that. So please tell me in the comments what EVE career path you have chosen and why you chose it. Or if you're new to the game, ask questions about EVE career paths you might want to choose. Now for some brief channel updates. Again, I apologize for not releasing the next chapter of my EVE stories, but I was unable to compose any of the cinematics for that video because the EVE test server has been down and will be down into August. However, I've got it all scripted out. So the next thing I will do is some live streaming and create an accurate Klingon Katinga Battlecruiser model for some upcoming videos. So hopefully you guys can join me with that within the coming week here, maybe this weekend. And thank you to the new patrons on my Patreon at patreon.com resurrected and those would be Jonathan, Dustin Hatchett, and uh, Rijabro3. Until next time, space friends.